Hello and welcome to Guitars for Bars. It's time to spray clear on the Iron Mockingbird. We'll be using Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Enamel. Uh, just under six cans probably. I'm going to build it up pretty thick so I've got uh, some material to work with for sanding, leveling, and possibly buffing. We'll see what happens. Real quick, here's what it looks like up close. That is the Ceram Coat by Delta Acrylic Paint. I'm going to start with the back and do the back sides and neck today and then the rest of it tomorrow or the next day might wait a couple days so i'm going to show you this first coat and then i'm going to turn the camera off and do the rest of this side and show you the finished result okay here we go Right, I love how the black gets blacker, gets darker, and brings out the color when you spray that. Now it's not going to stay that glossy. You'll see. As you can see, after one coat, you can really see the texture of the paint. You can also see that even though I used white and black mixing them together and painting at the same time, I managed to keep the overall texture of the back pretty much uniform. So even if I don't get it completely smoothed out, it's still going to be the same. Not real smooth spots and real lumpy spots. It'll all be pretty even. The last coat is on the back. It's wet. I just sprayed it. But you can see that it is smoother than it was just the brush strokes. The last few coats I put on real heavy so that it would puddle in the lower areas and kind of stay off the high areas. Uh, then I'm going to sand it once it's dry and try to smooth it out a little bit. Then we'll give it more coats. This last coat was started with a third can. And as you can see, it's rather gray. The edges are supposed to be black. They're supposed to be black like that. So I put it on kind of thick, which sometimes will make it fog up a little bit but it usually clears out when it dries but this is drying and it's not really darkening up too much so I guess we'll just wait a couple hours and see what happens and also it's there it is you can see it see them little black specks they came out of that can of rust only and matte clear enamel so I stopped I'm not gonna do anything else let this dry and then when I sand it hopefully I can get those little black specks out. If not, if they don't come out sanding, I'll use an X-Acto knife and just pop them out of there. I don't know what they are. Part of the plastic, maybe, from the nozzle. I don't know, but it's stuck in my clear, so I'll be working on that. There's a close-up. It's kind of hard to see. The phone don't really focus that close, but they're kind of crescent-shaped. All right, we'll see what happens. It's been two days. The stuff is dried. It's shrank down. And since I puddled it on there the way I did, it ended up incredibly flat. I'm really surprised at how well this stuff leveled out just spraying it on. Now, the problem I had with the black around the edges, it dried out and everything is fine. It's just I had it on pretty thick. And sometimes when you do that, it gets hazy until it dries. It took about six hours to get back to normal. Now there's a little uh, paint skin that was in the bottle that got stuck underneath the clear that I didn't realize was in there. Uh, that's going to sand out. Once we sand this side, it's going to all smooth out. It's kind of hard to see. There's a little bit of a brush stroke thing going on right there. You can see that. I think all this stuff is going to sand out and then we'll give it another coat 
uh, several coats of clear on top of that and we should end up with a very smooth flat finish that should look very professional and good enough for a music store okay but first we're going to flip it over and spray the other side the same way we did this side most of the black specks on the back that came out of this one can of paint they were sitting on top of the clear so they broke off when i rubbed my hand over it they left a teeny tiny little piece in the clear that's like a, you call it like an anchor point for them and uh, that's going to come out when I sand it. And if it doesn't come out from sanding, I'll use an X-Acto knife and carefully flick the little black specks out of the white area. Uh, and I'll show you all that when we get to the next video. But now I'm going to go ahead and use that same can of paint on this one. I've been uh, spraying it on some other stuff and I haven't had any more black stuff come out of it. So we're going to take our chances with it. I'm going to shake it for a second and then here we go. Okay, now one thing I want to say about this paint, if you're doing this yourself, this coat and pretty much every consecutive coat after this until you let it dry all the way is dangerous territory if dirt gets in it. If dirt gets in it right now, I would stop and not paint another coat until this completely dries and then I'd dig all that dirt out and then start again. That'd be tomorrow. So uh, you don't want to mess with it because here's what happens. This paint eats into this clear let's remind you here this eats into the ceram coat by delta and, and then when it dries it solidifies with it and it's like it becomes like one thing it becomes a shell so until this is dry that acrylic paint is no longer stable if i touch it with my thumbnail and rub it a little bit it'll just wipe it right off of there and it'll just be completely screwed have to let it dry have to sand that spot go touch that spot up again and then start all over with the whole clearing process so you don't want to touch it anytime between now and tomorrow when it's dry all right i'm about to start the second coat but i wanted to remind you of what the brush strokes look like before I've got all the clear built up on it so that it ends up smooth. You can see all the high points and low points in the paint and everything's sticking up. So we'll take a look at it again when it's all coated like I did the back. Oh no, I messed up big time. Did you guys catch it when I was painting this? Did you see the mistake I made? I did not mask off the back. And I had this sitting on that parchment paper. Well, the overspray got on the parchment paper and between the parchment paper and guitar and stuck it to the guitar. Oh no, what am I going to do? Well, some of it I got off while it was still uh, not quite dry. I used some blue tape, took most of it off, but some of it was a big area. So I thought, I'm just going to wait and see what happens. So I waited to see what happens and it didn't peel off. So I sanded it a little bit with 100 grit paper and I'm going to go back now with 600 grit and water and do some wet sanding. You can, you can see it there a little bit. And I'm going to get all that sanded out and since it'll be water, the paper will dissolve just like it does on those image transfer videos you may have seen. And it should come out okay. And we're going to be leveling all that off anyway, so I'm not going to worry about it. See it right there? Okay, we'll see how it turns out. I've been working on it for about 10 minutes with the 600 grit and I believe the paper's all gone but I still got a few little scratches I guess you'd call them from where the paper was and I've also got you see the little shiny spots 
that's the little pits I've been sanding it you can see right here the texture of the paint pretty much I haven't hit that much with the sandpaper yet it's still pretty rough but then there you can see where I got rid of the paper and how it's smoothing out so I'm going to quit with the 600 and go back to the 400 for a little bit and try to knock a little bit of that texture off and then go back and finish it up with the 600 again all right we get the 400 grit get on it once i got it all smoothed out and the texture is all the same uniform we'll take some more pictures okay i cheated a little bit i started with 320 and used it a little bit and then i switched to the 400 and you can see right there a little bit of the texture now I'm using the 600. I'm not going to worry about getting 100% of that texture out because this is the back. And it's going to probably stay uh, with this matte finish. I don't think I'm going to try to buff it out, at least not on the back. So Because uh, I kind of like the way it looks, even on the front too. So I'm going to just show you a little bit of this. I'm using the uh, composite block, the one with the piece of foam on it. And I've got the foam side down. And a little bit of water so all i'm doing is taking it light pressure not not too hard i mean i was using a little bit more pressure on the the 320 but right now and and since i'm doing the 600 sorry about that i'm trying to watch what i'm doing and do this at the same time um see i'm just going around the edges because the edges you want to get those level they're going to have some of the worst bumps and there was one here i think i got rid of it already if not i'll get rid of it uh, you know later after i turn this off but i just want to show how i'm doing this I, mostly i just go around little circles i spent more time in the center in the belt buckle area because of the uh, extra stuff and the problems with the paper but these other areas just i'm going over you can see the little bit of the the clear slurry whatever you want to call it it's just showing up on there so i'll stop and wipe that off when i get done but uh the next video will have more detailed sanding information so uh i just want to get this to the point where i can get some get the rest of the clear on it and then let it dry and then mask the back off after i sand the front and paint it and then not get overspray on everything so uh remember let this stuff dry really good mask off the one side you already did and then spray the other side don't just throw it down on a piece of of uh stuff like i did uh, parchment paper because that could cause you some problems i'm going to keep sanding this so it gets to the point where i want and then i'm going to uh use just the foam pad the flexible one and I got to do all the edges because the edges got a lot of overspray. And then I'll probably go ahead and do the front and the neck and everything. Have it all 100% sanded and then mask off the parts I'm not going to spray. And then spray the parts I'm going to. So like I said, the next video we're going to detail sand the front. All right. Have a good one. Uh, please hit like and subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. All right, I had a couple trouble spots. I had to go back and hit again with the 320 and the 400. But I want to give you an overview of how it looks right now. You can see there's a little bit of texture there. I'm not going to worry about that because it's the back. You can see the swirl marks from the sandpaper. And you can also see how smooth it is. I know the reflection is kind of hard to see. But the brush strokes... The texture of the brush strokes is gone. You should be able to see that in the reflection, that it's pretty smooth. So this is as good as it needs to be for the back. I'm going to be spraying the, the clear on it when I get the rest of it all sanded. Right through here was the trouble spot I had to work on a little bit. So it's not perfect, but it's good enough, like I say, for the back because it gets belt buckle abuse because this is a guitar for a bar, not some showpiece that's worth a lot of money that's really really nice it's just it's going to be nice but you know what i mean you can beat this one up and take it home and repaint it all right see you next time